I don't need a rudder. My RC instructor only ever mentioned using rudder on the ground for taxiing. I don't fly if there's a crosswind. Ever heard these phrases uttered at your local field? Been guilty of them yourself? Don't sweat it. This is unfortunately a common problem in our hobby, but it's ultimately because we don't need to get a full-on schooling run by the FFA or a <laughs> FAA. Can you safely fly an RC plane without a legit training curriculum and knowledge of how an airplane flies? Sure, but in the same way a doctor can better perform surgery by knowing the intricacies of what they're operating on, not toy operation style, RC pilots can better fly their airplanes knowing the ins and outs of what makes them tick. Let's forward slip into four rudder use and knowledge topics and tips that can help you better fly and understand your RC airplane. First up, What's that rudder for, anyways? Sure, in most planes, minus big jets with fancy things called tillers, you can use your rudder to turn the nose wheel or tail wheel while on the ground. Or nothing, if you're a poor Dawn Patrol World War I tail skiddy rep. But in the same way that a blender isn't just for your Mountain Dew and Dorito smoothie, a rudder isn't just for steering on the ground. Let's go big picture here. To initiate a turn, unless you're flying Peter Scripple's Ultralight or a three-channel park flyer, you will start the turn by using ailerons to add bank. However, ailerons have their own form of kryptonite, purely in how they work aerodynamically. Let's look. When you begin a bank to the right, your aileron goes up creating drag, and your left aileron goes down creating drag but also lift. You'd think creating lift is good in any scenario, but with respect to the downward aileron, it ends up making the nose of the plane want to fly towards that added lift. The resulting outcome is what's called adverse yaw. Here's a quick demo in a full-scale airplane. We're in a uh, 1959 Luscom 8F, a plane that is known for having a lot of adverse yaw. So to start out here, I can actually put my feet on the floor. See them down there. And uh, I'm actually just gonna do full left and right aileron. Full right, full left. Notice how the nose is going outside of the turn. So in that right turn, that aileron out there is down and it's creating more lift making that nose want to go towards that lift, right? So in order to fix that tendency, we have to coordinate it with the rudder, right? Now, not all RC airplanes are that bad, but if you really want to try and get your stick and rudder up, try and just use the rudder with your aileron, right? So same thing, this can be a Dutch roll. A Dutch roll is where you pick a point on the horizon. I'm going to start going full left in right on the aileron, but adding rudder this time. And hopefully the nose stays right there if we do it right. So notice now, as I give aileron input, the nose isn't moving, it's staying where we're going. And that, that's what you want to take from this. Pretty crazy stuff, right? Now, there are ways that aircraft engineers can reduce the effects of adverse yaw, such as freeze ailerons, differential ailerons, among others. But we can't always rely on this. Model airplanes are similar. Some models have less adverse yaw than others for many different reasons. To avoid boring you, the main takeaway from all of this is that to turn properly, we need to make what's called a coordinated turn. A coordinated turn requires you to add a bit of rudder with aileron inputs to make the plane go where it's pointed. Just remember, mixing rudder with ailerons in your transmitter is cheating. Don't do it. Nah, wait, undo that. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, good on you. Moving forward. The second and third set of topics to address in Rudder Use 101 is the definitions of and differences between skidding and slipping turns. Skidding and slipping turns are important in relation to rudder usage because without a rudder, combined with ailerons, they'd be impossible to do. Let's start with the bad one, the one that we should all avoid like that crazy cousin at a wedding, skidding. Skidding is something overconfident rear wheel drive Mustang drivers should be familiar with. Picture that scenario when they go to show off by stepping too hard in the gas and end up sliding off the road when the tail of their car goes outside their turn direction. While in said skid, in their Mustang, their rear view mirror ornament was hanging in the opposite direction of the turn they were making. Think of airplane skids in the same way. They're bad for both your ego and put your life at risk as well. The most common example of where a skid could occur while flying is on your base to final turn. Here's a sample scenario. Whoops, we overshot the runway in a left banking turn. Just kick even more left rudder to point the nose where we need to go? Good idea, right? Bad idea. What did we just do aerodynamically? We put the airplane into a very uncoordinated turn. Remember how the Mustang driver's ornament went outside of their turn direction when they were skidding across the road? The ball in an airplane's turn and bank coordinator does the same in a skid. Similar forces apply here, but in three dimensions. The wing outside of the turn in this scenario, the right wing, is now flying faster, and the wing on the inside of the turn, the left wing, is now being potentially forced into a stalled scenario thanks to a fancy term called angular velocity. This is what leads to that pesky base to final wing drop crash scenario that we're all too familiar with, especially in RC. As the great Bob Hoover once said, don't stall out with your ball out. 
Now that we've gone over skidding turns, let's go over slipping turns. Big picture wise, there are a couple different types of slips you can do, but the biggest takeaway is that slips are a cross-controlled condition. This means that the ailerons are going one way while the rudder is going the other, or vice versa. Slips are used primarily either to get down quick or to land in a crosswind. While the skidding turn has the ball outside of the turn direction, in a slipping turn, it actually goes inside. Try and think of it like drifting a car, like Dylan Hughes here in Formula Drift, but with three dimensions. The first type of slip is a forward slip. This is a type of slip where if you find yourself high and need to get down quick without gaining too much airspeed, you can cross control by rolling the ailerons into the wind and applying opposite rudder, full rudder if desired. This allows you to utilize your fuselage as a quasi air brake and come down quicker than Obi-Wan in half a ship. Not to worry, we are still flying half a ship. Don't worry, mastering this will come with time, but it's a fun technique. The most common real life scenario this is utilized in is a high altitude but close to the runway, dead stick, or even a short approach where you may find yourself higher than Snoop Dogg and need to come back to earth quickly and avoid overshooting the runway. Here's a quick demonstration. We're flying high to our left over our final approach path and suddenly we lose our engine. To initiate the forward slip to get down quick, ensure you are at a slower speed before starting, in other words, you're close to your approach speed or angle of attack. Then, simultaneously apply a small amount of aileron into the wind while applying opposite rudder, which generally is full rudder for most forward slips where you want to get down quick. Since we have a right crosswind in this scenario, we will use right aileron and full left rudder. Don't use too much ailerons though, or you might find yourself inverted without too much notice. If you find yourself getting too slow or fast, use your pitch or elevator to adjust your speed or angle of attack. While coming down, if you are drifting away from the runway centerline, use roll inputs from your ailerons to control the ground track of the plane. Once you're approaching a safe altitude to remove the forward slip and commence a safe landing, remove your cross-controlled inputs and fly to the maneuver. The second type of slip is a side slip. A side slip is an advanced technique. It's important to note that it's one that can be utilized by all sizes of RC planes, but it's more critical to be used while flying heavier planes such as warbirds, and especially on pavement. It's utilized primarily as a crosswind landing technique, but can also be used as a fun challenge to do one wheel touch and goes. A side slip is still a cross controlled condition, but it's used in a different way than a forward slip. To understand a side slip fully, let's quickly touch up on what a crab is but not that Seattle seafood though. Let's say you're on final approach and you've got a stiff 90 degree crosswind from the left. Without correction, if you pointed the nose down the runway, you'd get blown away from it. This is called wind drift. Think of a boat trying to go directly across a river with a strong current with the bow pointed straight at the shore on the other side. To correct for wind drift, you would point the nose or bow of your boat slightly into the wind or river current. If done correctly, you'll notice that you're moving over the surface like a crab. You will be pointed away from your intended target, but be tracking over the surface in the direction you want to go. This is crabbing. Now that you know what a crab is, let's tie that back into a side slip. Ever driven your car down a road where the wind was so strong from either side of you that you could feel it literally pushing your car out of your lane? A plane landing in a crosswind deals with the same issue, but with three dimensions. Where you begin a side slip on an approach for a crosswind is entirely up to you. Generally, first, a pilot will fly the plane into ground effect, which is a wingspan distance or less in height above the ground. They'll enter ground effect in a crab condition with their nose pointed into the crosswind. Next, as they begin to round out right before their flare, they gently apply rudder opposite of the wind direction to align the plane with the runway. Simultaneously, they will also roll their ailerons into the wind to prevent the plane from drifting and maintain their ground track. Finally, they'll ensure to maintain the cross control and adjust as needed until they touch down on the upwind wheel and continue with their landing. More on that in a later video on crosswinds. Just like the car in a windy road example we discussed, you're making corrections to keep your car in its lane, or in our case, your plane on the runway. Our final rudder use 101 tip for RC flying is the fun one, applying rudder use in aerobatics. One thing is for sure, aerobatic flying will be boring if a rudder wasn't one of the main flight controls. From stuff like hovering, knife edges, flat turns, and even the super nice looking slow rolls. Taking the basic concepts of rudder and applying them at a higher level will be sure to really get your head fully wrapped around just what that fin at the back of your fuselage is for. In conclusion, flying with rudder and utilizing these tips and tricks is something that everyone should try and start doing. Or, if you already do, challenge yourself and try and learn some of the new things that really utilize the rudder, but with everything else simultaneously as well. 
Our best suggestion is trying to nail those one wheel touch and goes, which utilize that advanced side slip technique. It really gets you patting your head while rubbing your tummy or uh, you know whatever the kids do nowadays. Also, be sure to reference the video description for some great articles on some of the topics we covered together. That's all I've got for this video. If you enjoyed it, we've got to coordinate your turn and ask you to go ahead and hit that like button. Or if you want to ensure a quality side slip landing, maybe even hit that subscribe button. We'll see you again next time with a new upload. Thank you.